welcome. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Notice is hereby given that Scranton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, December 5th, 2013 at 515, well, a little later than 515, <laughs> in Council Chambers, second floor, Municipal Building 340 North Washington Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. The purpose of said public hearing is to hear testimony and discuss the following. File of Council number 55 of 2013, appropriating funds for the expenses of the city government for the period commencing on the first day of January 2014 to and including December 31st, 2014 by the adoption of the general city operating budget for the year of 2014. <clears throat> and uh, Mrs. Craig, do we have a sign in sheet? I think it's underneath. Is it in Jane and stuff? It was there. Is that it underneath? Oh, sorry. Hiding. <laughs> <laughs> I do have the sign-in sheet, and our first speaker tonight is Marie Schumacher. Uh, good evening, Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. I good took evening. the liberty of putting my questions in writing, uh, one for the chair and one for the finance chair, in case I don't get through, because I would like all of them. And I must start saying I, I think it's I think it's poor that this meeting is starting 15 minutes late. I, I if we can get here, I I don't understand why our council meeting members can't get here. Okay, please provide the assumed percent of property tax owners will pay the property tax and garbage fee in 2014, as well as the rate assumed in the 2013 budget for this tax and fee. Please provide a breakdown of the cost of the total garbage fee by category and the number of fee payers to whom the invoice will be sent. How much, if any, is included in this line item for repayment of the 2013 landfill forbearance? What additional service will be provided in 2014 that wasn't provided in 2013 that accounts for the increase in the rental registration fee to $50? How many rental properties are currently registered? I recall the city having building inspectors, but there are no building inspections listed in the list of inspections performed by the city on page 11 of the budget. Why? What is the amount of the booting fee that Republic will be charging in 2014? What is the intergovernmental reimbursement split between CDBG demolitions and the state's contribution to the pension obligation? From what entities and in what amount for each will pilots be received? The miscellaneous revenue slash cable TV revenue includes $28 million to be borrowed in 2014 for the Public Safety Employees Payback Award. It is my understanding there would be a $100,000 penalty per month for non-payment of this back pay. When is the $28 million expected to be received and will it suffice to cover the interest? Will there be a payment from the liquid fuel tax fund? And if yes, what is the assumed amount? Is there a lender for the tax anticipation note? And if so, what will be the fee and interest charged? Will the local tax amount budgeted for 2013 be achieved? And if not, how much will the budget revenue be short? Will we really have sufficient cash to achieve interest income of $10,000? It appears we will not achieve the 2013 budget amount. Again, it appears that rents and concessions will not achieve the budgeted amount for 2013. So what is the basis for optimism the identical budgeted amount will be achieved in 2014? Same questions on intergovernmental reimbursement account, where only 9,000 was collected through September against a budget of 2.9 million, which is being increased to almost 5 million in 2014. The account description of the departmental earnings says it is revenue received from operations, and it is noted in the budget variance section 
The parking meter rates will increase by 25 cents per hour. I find this confusing as we have no department that collects parking meter fees. There is no explanation for a budget variance in interfund transfers despite an increase of $1.5 million over last year's budget. What accounts for the variance? What accounts for the unpaid bill slash court awards expenditure jump of $7 million over the current year? If we are going to borrow a TAN of $16 million and TANs must be repaid in the year received, why do we have a 2014 TAN expense of $17 million? Why does the fire department require their own payroll clerk? Why does the payroll expense of the fire department increase by $2 million while the number of employees decreases by three? What is the tax collection committee? Who are the members? And why do they expect to incur expenses of almost half a million dollars? Why are the expenses of the three additional neighborhood police officers included as non-additive to the budget, while the CDBG funds for demolition expenses are added to the budget? They come out of the same account. Why does the DPW administration health care costs increase by over $400,000 over last year? Why is there a 50% drop in construction dash paving materials considering the condition of the roads? Why does the DPW require two additional garbage collectors? Does the cost of DPW workers setting up and taking down the NAOG Christmas lights get covered by the free will donations? Is this something that could take a hiatus to cut expenses? And uh, my final point, and then I'll leave. How much is included in the budget for the city's portion of buying and demolishing the floodplain properties in the Parker Street area? I'll look forward to your answers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, some of the answers uh, that you uh, are seeking, I, oh, well, I'll just say this one last thought. I will, I will uh, forward, the an forward your questions to the appropriate departments for all um, questions that I do not have the answers to tonight. Our next speaker is Ruben Berry, Berrio? Okay, sorry. I'm going to be brief and concise. The lady before me covered everything pretty much as it is. But uh, I like to speak at bottom lines. I just moved to Scranton five years ago, and I find out that we've been in the situation for 40 years at least. Depressed city, yada, yada, yada. So 40 years ago, should have, something should have been, something's going to happen in 40 years from now. If you make 10 bucks a week, now this could be low math, don't, don't get your calculators out. If you make 10 bucks a week and you spend 12, sooner or later, it's going to catch up with you. I didn't go to college, but I know that much. Maybe if I went to college, I would understand it. So that's what I'm, what I'm saying is that we kicked the can down the road. We hit the brick wall. Now what? Are we going to go the way of Europe, uh, Greece, and of course right here, uh, Detroit. If we're not heading that way, I wish somebody would say we're not. And that's about all I have to say. It's the bottom line is the brick wall has arrived. Unless you, if you don't get a hernia, move it back a little bit more. That might help. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council during this public hearing? Hey, Fran, it's Granton. Good evening. Mrs. Schumacher, <coughs> excuse me, asked numerous questions. And I know you said you were going to forward those questions, but I think every single one of those questions should be answered next week with the question and then the answer. Not given to her. I don't care if it takes you an hour. 
to get every single question that she asked for and get an answer to every one of them. And, and I don't want to hear the, the people that, she, that the department heads that you sent them to didn't get back to you. It's your job as council people, we're here at a public hearing, to get that information that she wants. So just don't wait for them to contact you. Contact them and see what the answer is. So you'll have those answers for next week's meeting. This is too important not to get the answers to those questions. That's what your job is, to represent us. Not to take care of your political friends or any other agendas that you have. Um, it's very sad to see there's hardly anybody here, probably because half the people don't even know there's a public hearing because I don't even think the Scranton Times put anything in the paper about it. Should have been headlines in the paper this morning, public hearing. This budget is a disgrace. It's a shame you're leaving, Mrs. Evans, because if you were here, this would never have been taking place, never. You're always for the people, and this council definitely is not if they pass this budget. And Mr. McGough, Mr. Rogan, Mr. Joyce, I don't know where Mr. Laskam is, maybe he can't make it, but I'm waiting to see how they will vote. You're elected by the people. You don't, this budget will chase everybody out of the city. People cannot afford this. It's, it's disgusting, it's disgraceful. You should be ashamed of yourself to even consider it. This is the first time in the history of Scranton that such a budget has come in front of you. We can't sustain it. We can't afford it. There's no money. You're going to be chasing people out of this city. You're trying to get people in. You're going to see many foreclosures. People can't even sell their homes. They're going to be losing them to the banks. Then what? Anyway, I'll be back in the other part of this. I'm going to ask some questions. I want the answers while I'm here versus in motions. And as I said, Mr. Joyce, it's very important. Every single solitary question, I don't care if you have to split them up amongst the council people, get the answers to every one of those questions for next week. I don't want to hear, oh, they didn't get back to us. You have time. That's what you're getting paid for. You call these people and you get the answers. This is a budget that affects our money. We need the answers to every one of those questions. Every single one. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Andrew Potter, Scranton. Before you start the clock, um, I only have a few minutes, and uh, we have until the end of the year. I'd just like to ask uh, one question, and that is, how many people in this room, by a show of hands, can afford to pay the taxes that are proposed? By a show of hands. How many people can afford to pay the taxes that are proposed? OK? And if there, if there are no hands up, that means that that's, if there are no hands up, there is no way that we are to continue to move in a direction that has been moved in for such a, 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 a long period of time. And that is borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. This is God's city. You know, peer pressure is not something that is just uh, given to our kids. You know, for many years I've seen things go on and I've seen um, a lady that we have up here, uh, Miss Evans, uh, work in, in an environment uh, and try to do as best she can um, as, as, as a, a representative of the people. And, um, you know, I read where uh, uh, she's alleged to have jumped ship. And um, Bill Cartwright, uh, uh, he's, uh, he needs to be picked up, and uh, the, uh, the citizens of, 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 of Scranton have come to make a decision, and, it, and that decision is for a change. Um, Bill Cartwright and the citizens of Scranton in this great city has not fallen, so we don't need to be picked up right now. What I believe that needs to be happen is, happens is that we need to acknowledge the Lord thy God, and we are in December, a month where at the beginning of the month and at the end of the month, um, our, most re our most sacred religious holidays are, 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 are being um, celebrated. Um, from one end to the other end, we should come together. I believe that there should be a telethon. telethon. I believe that there should be an all-out effort to give the people the, uh, of, of Scranton a chance to give the new mayor a chance. The people have spoken by their vote. But 
We need more than that because they voted before. They voted more than 11 years ago. And it took 11 years to get the city to where it is right now. So we need to bring in an, an, an administration with a, with a clean slate. And the only way to do that, I see, is to ask God to give us help. And we need to help ourselves. And the only way to do that is for us to get out here, all the universities, pay their fair share, all of our students come out and raise funds for the city. I'm quite sure that if the checks are written, if we come out here and do what it is that we need to do and not be at home, because we cannot profit from others' demise, okay? This city should not go into foreclosure. And if you continue in the way that you've been doing this for over 11 years, then this city will go into foreclosure. Somebody has to profit from that. Lord thy God says that we cannot profit from that. I'd like to thank the, uh, the body of the city council for doing one thing. As I mentioned the last time I was up here, which I have, and which I haven't been up here prior to that for years, and that is keeping the Pledge of Allegiance in the building. You swore an oath, the mayor swore an oath, and all politicians have sworn an oath to God that we would represent the city. Is this the city of God? I believe it is. Does, is this God's city? I believe that it is. I believe that we need to get out here. We don't have to light up elect electrical and run up the PPL bills. We can save that money. If all, the, if all the churches and all the ministers were to bless candles and bring these candles forth and congregations uh, come forth and all of these professional fundraisers that, that, uh, that you have, Hillary Clinton is from, is from Scranton. President, uh, Vice President Biden is from Scranton. How many people are from Scranton that needed uh, Scranton's vote when they, when they needed to be elected? These are the people that can come and that can save this city. If you say that it can't be done with God, all things are possible. I truly believe that we can get this done. But you can't get it done, I believe, by going on what you did before, okay? You have to, you have to look and see what it is that we can do. We have to do something new. And the people that are home need to get here. If, you're in a, if you need a ride, ask your neighbor for a ride. This is what we're here for. We're supposed to be community. We're supposed to... All religions, all religions should be here. This is, if you believe that this is God's city, and if you believe that we are a community, and if you believe that we are our, our, our neighbors, then we should be here. This city is worth fighting for. This is God's city. You have no idea of the wrath that God can put up upon us. No weatherman can predict what it is that God can give us. God can give us sunlight when the lights go out in PPL. God can give us all it is that we need. All we have to do is ask for it. And again, I thank City Council, and I pray that the people out there come, come, show up. One candle lit can light up 10. 10 can light 100. 100 can light 1,000. Let the world see that we are a city that's in need, not a city that is prospering. And if we can do this, Businesses would break down, would, 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 would run over each other, trying to come in. All banks, if, if we were to write checks to the city council for, 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 uh, 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 and, and monies would come into city council, I'm sure city council would be glad to give it to the new administration so that the mayor would have a new mayor, our mayor, new mayor would have a chance. God bless the city of Scranton and God bless its citizens and come and show that you love your city and that the seniors will not fall, and that the lower people in this city will not fall. I'm sorry that I've taken so long, I apologize, but I think that we all know that God is in charge. No one politician can be in charge. We have, you have made an oath, to, 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 you swore an oath to God that you would represent this city, and I pray that you would do this. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council Doug Miller Scranton. Good evening. Well, Good evening. Uh, other than uh, proposed 57% uh, tax increase, uh, increase in the garbage fee and uh, the rental registration, and a few other things, uh, other than that, it's uh, another day in the office. You know, as I said two weeks ago, I, uh, I'm st in staunch opposition to this budget. Um, it, it certainly isn't in, in the best interest of the residents of this city, um, particularly dealing with all we've gone through. In the, uh, the last year and a half specifically, 
uh, dating back to last year at this time and the, uh, the challenges that we faced throughout the summer and the difficult decisions that the council and the administration had to make together. And all that hard work and the effort that you put into putting a recovery plan together and, and you know, doing the best of your ability to you know, come together and, and uh, implement revenue enhancements to better the city and generate revenue for the city uh, to move us forward, it, it seems as if we've unfortunately gotten away from that. Uh, it's, it certainly looks that way when I look at this budget proposed uh, by, by the administration. As I've said many times repetitively, uh, the tax increase I think we all knew was inevitable. Um, unfortunately, you know, the residents of this city have been warned for years that this day was going to come. And unfortunately, many sat back, and that's, uh, you know, not to be disrespectful, but many, many citizens sat back. And yet they were warned, um, you know, for the last 12 years that uh, these challenges were going to continue to grow. And now we're to the point where it's time to pay the piper. And, you know, we hate to see this, but, uh, you know, this, this day has come. But, you know, there's only so, so much you can do in, in terms of placing the burden on the residents of this city. And, it, you know, it upsets me when I look at, you know, the garbage fee going from $178 to a proposed $300 a year. You know, the last three weeks I've had many senior citizens who've approached me at work downtown Scranton, and uh, they're just absolutely uh, disgusted with, uh, with what's taking place here. And I use them as an example because, you know, my, my experience of being involved in the city and running for office and knocking on doors, I know that the majority of the population in this city um, is elderly. You know, we have a lot of senior citizens that live in this community. They make a majority of our population. And they simply can't afford to take an additional burden on. You know, it's bad enough, unfortunately, we have to raise taxes, property taxes. But when you're asking them to, you know, add more to their garbage fee, I think is totally unfair. Um, the rental registration, I discussed this two weeks ago. You know, this was a, uh, a plan that had good intentions on, you know, bringing in a great deal of revenue for the city. But now, you know, we're asking an awful lot out of not just the landlords, but more importantly, the tenants. Because ultimately, this is going to be passed along to the tenant by their rent being increased, increased uh, dramatically. They're not going to put up with that. They don't have to. They can easily pack up and go rent down on Old Forge, Taylor, Music, or any other neighboring community within minutes of the city. It's very simple. So if we think we're, we're you know, accomplishing something here, we're only, we're only shooting ourselves in the foot here, in the feet here. And uh, it, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, I talked about a recovery plan that we had obligations to follow certain implementations of the recovery plan that we've failed to do. And it, it reminds me of 12 years ago when we blatantly ignored a recovery plan that we adopted back then. You know, whether you supported the recovery plan or you didn't, you know, the council and the administration worked tirelessly, you know, for months last year to, to put this plan together and to realize and see these things through. And as we said, when you're in a city that, you know, faces the challenges we face, um, when you're putting recovery plans together, you're taking chances. That's what it is. But when you're as desperate as we are, um, you, you know, it comes a time where you have to take a chance and you have to hope that you realize these things. But when you don't even attempt, um, you know, I, there's no excuse for, for not attempting. Um, we, we may not be successful, but at least at the end of the day, we could say that we, you know, put everything into it and we, we tried. Um, we can't say that we did that. And my number one biggest pet peeve in, in terms of the recovery plan and our inability to follow through is our inability and our lackluster performance on dealing with the pilots. You know, there's no doubt the nonprofits play a very large and they play a very important role in the community. And they're an asset to the community. You know, we, we talk about the University of Scranton and, you know, I know I've criticized them in the past and then I'm not going to, you know, downplay what they do. They do a lot of good things, there's no doubt. You know, I'm, I'm not going to deny them of that. But I also feel that they need to pay their fair share. You know, this city provides many services to them and their students daily. And, you know, when it, it troubles me when an institution that generates millions and millions of dollars annually, you know, contributes such a minimal amount to the city, knowing full well the situation and the challenges we face financially, it upsets me. And, you know, it upsets me that I feel that there's, there's just no creativity in our city government. And, you know, a speaker earlier tonight talked about bankruptcy. You know, it's funny, I, when I look back at all we've gone through, um, I think in the four years of this council, I think the one 
the, the, the moment that we're going to remember the most out of this council um, is, is last summer, the summer of 2012, and what we went through. And I think that had it not been for the majority of this council, um, we, we probably would have fallen into a bankruptcy. And, you know, we think things look pretty nasty now. You know, you can only imagine what a bankruptcy um, would do. And so that's why when we hear that we should file for bankruptcy, I think, as I've said, um, that's, that's the last resort. That's, that's obviously not something that we're, we're looking at. But there's a lot of good things. There's no doubt that have taken place. But there's more, um, you know, bad than good at this point. And to go ahead with the budget as it stands, as I said, would be unacceptable and it would be unfair to the residents of this community. And I'm confident that this council will, will follow through and, and take a close look at this and make any necessary amendments so that we can keep the best interests of the residents of this city in mind because that's what's, that's what's at stake here. That's the most important thing. And uh, I'll reserve the rest of my comments for the regular uh, portion of this Thank meeting. You, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Good evening. Um, Good can evening. I approach Mr. McGough? Certainly. He was my 10th grade basketball coach. Oh. Huh? <laughs> but let me thank you now for your service. You're a good coach. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Jay Walsh. Um, I lived in the city of Scranton for I've lived in the city of Scranton for the last 35 years, and I've been a property owner for the last 19 years. Okay, I'm the founder of Occupy Wall Street. It's a worldwide spiritual movement, which is apolitical. Um, my writings have influenced the President of the United States, uh, President Putin, uh, the Pope, Bill and Melinda Gates, the Dalai Lama, Warren Buffett, and a whole host of other people. Um, the mayor of New York City used my manifesto, which is over there, to basically win by 50 points for the mayorship of New York. Um, something in the city of Scranton stinks, and it's not rotting fish. Okay? The economic issue uh, was brought to light last year when the national uh, news media showed up at our doorstep. Uh, this is not the, the issue of Mayor Doherty or you folks. It stretches all the way back to the mercantile tax. Uh, I think Mayor uh, Doherty's dad was on the council at that time. Um, so there's lots of blame to go around. Uh, I don't blame council and I don't blame the city unions. I think it's a collective of all of us. Uh, I think, uh, what can I say? Uh, the idea that we didn't address issues at the time and we sold off assets as the years transpired. Um, was part of it. The convenience of just basically doing what we did for the time to push the can down the road. Uh, the, uh, uh, not, I basically now think the ship is sunk, but uh, we have a couple alternatives. I mean, we can do the Chapter 9. We could basically tax the well that's just pretty well dry. Uh, uh, the status quo is over. The error of uh, politicians has to move to the era of public servants. Uh, I think the mayor elect Mr. Cartwright, Courtright, uh, you know, he won, but a lot of people vote for the lesser of two evils. <laughs> uh, I'm not a void of ideas to fix the issues. I've studied the issues, um, and my ideas have basically been implemented from here to Moscow, and actually North Korean leader is actually has my manifesto. Um, Mr. McGough, if you could pass that down and let them read the cover letter, if you, you would. I've been working on this project for a lot of years, okay? Um, and it's come to fruition now. I, I'm hoping to publish that sometime in, uh, in March. My goal is uh, March 21st. The, uh, there's a, uh, I think a few issues that we need to kind of look at. And I think if you back off and look at the bigger perspective, uh, we have the county uh, study commission going on. We have a city in highly distressed situation. I think that if we can get our 
eggs in a row and in a basket. I think the idea of a consolidated county government may be the way to go for both economy of scales, for economy of impact, uh, just a whole host of reasons because we're good people here. It's, uh, you know, 95% of us and 98% of us, it's just a few bad apples that have basically brought the national media down on top of us. Um, today, as Occupy moves through, we're basically addressing a living wage today across the country. We, we, I think we, we need to put that on our agenda. The city of Scranton should be thinking about making employers in the city present a, a living wage, which is 11 to $13. Uh, nationally, but the idea of somebody getting paid 70, 725 living under a bridge and going to work every day, I don't think cuts it. And we have lots of people under our bridges and, and along the river down there. I've studied the, the uh, homeless issue quite thoroughly. Uh, so uh, the idea that you're raising the, ga the uh, garbage tax from 170 to $300 Okay, what I can address to that is, first of all, Mayor Bloomberg took my information and basically uh, all the restaurants in New York City are made to compost now. And the savings uh, with that, I don't know, 235 million pounds of uh, garbage uh, uh, compost that basically is not winding up in the landfill, it's basically winding up uh, to be reused and recycled. Uh, the idea of so many people living in the city that the city is not aware of, I think that we need to make renter's insurance mandatory, okay? And that it be the insurance uh, responsibility to tell of the people living in the household. And I think that would, because I'm a landlord also, and I, and I think uh, renter's insurance, I won't rent to anybody unless they have it. And that ups the type of people that you will have come to the city, because some people are gonna get their premium thing and say, you know, I can't, well, you can't live here. Then. Uh, I don't want to exclude anybody, but if you haven't been responsive, responsible in your past, I think that, you know, I'm into personal responsibility. Uh, I think that's a great idea. Am I done? Uh, yes. Okay. But anyway, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the public hearing will now conclude. Excuse me, Mrs. Evans? Yes. May I speak? Uh, well, if you listen, please. Anyone who did not have the chance to speak during the public hearing may offer his or her comments regarding the mayor's proposed budget during the citizens' participation portion of tonight's council meeting. Mrs. Evans, can I suggest that we extend by 15 minutes because we were um, about 15, 20 minutes late starting the hearing. Uh, we didn't start until about 5.30. Well, I believe that the, the people who are here, we're certainly able to give them the five minutes under citizens' participation. Okay. I think many, in fact, will choose to speak again. Will we allow those people to speak first? Which? The people that are waiting to speak on the, uh, on the budget, would we yes. allow them to speak first before the, the sign sheet? Yes, that would be fine. Okay. Thank you. That's fine. I thank you all for your participation, and City Council will take your testimony into consideration of the Mayor's proposed 2014 operating budget. This public hearing is adjourned. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community in the last week. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. 
Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority held October 17, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, agenda for the zoning hearing board to be held December 11, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation received October 9, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Tax Assessor's Report hearing dates October 30th and December 11th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Just one. Um, we received a letter today from um, Lackawanna County, and as you know, count, City Council requested both last year, and unfortunately the county said no this year, um, we received better news regarding extending the discount period um, for taxes. Um, it says, Dear Ms. Craig, uh, pursuant to your request dated November 25th, 2013, in the spirit of intergovernmental cooperation, the county commissioners have agreed to extend the deadline for the discount period in order for taxpayers to have additional time to pay. The county agrees to extend the first discount deadline from February 28th, 2014 to March 31st, 2014. So this is good news and um, I, I like to thank the county commissioners who I was very critical of last year um, when, when they refused to do this and I thank them this year. Um, Mrs. Craig, can we please send a copy of this letter to the school district and ask for their cooperation as well? And can we also give a copy to Mayor Courtright, Mayor Elect Courtright's transition team? Thank you. Is there anyone else? This Saturday, December 7th, Santa Claus will arrive by special train at six communities in the Lackawanna Valley during the Christmas in a Small Town program. Families are encouraged to assemble at the State Office Building parking lot on Lackawanna Avenue in Scranton at 2.45 p.m. to welcome Santa. Santa and his friends will greet all of the children and hear their lists of Christmas wishes. Afterwards, families can enjoy refreshments, live entertainment by the Scranton High School Marching Band, and special activities, including photo opportunities with the Santa train and its crew. All activities are free. Train rides for the public are not available at this event, however. This Saturday, our country marks the anniversary of the December 7, 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. We remember in our thoughts and prayers the over 2,000 soldiers killed and greater than 1,200 injured on that day that continues to live in infamy. Finally, I hope that all in our community enjoyed a happy Thanksgiving and that our Jewish friends and neighbors had a very blessed and happy Hanukkah. Could I, uh, one historical note as well, since you, Please. today is the 80th anniversary of the end of Prohibition. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> I don't know that that belongs in the category with Pearl Harbor Day, but it's a certainly an historical event and one that might interest Grantonians. Uh, Mrs. Craig? Fourth order, citizens' participation. Mr. Hickey? Thank you. Gene Hickey, a uh, resident of West Scranton, uh, and here on behalf of Mayor-elect Courtright's transition team uh, to comment on the uh, proposed uh, 2014 uh, budget and before I get started uh, there were a lot of pointed questions that were raised by some of the speakers earlier uh, many of the same questions that mayor elect court rights transition team has looked at in its review of the budget uh, 
I like you to know that the you know it's not just me on that transition team. There are many individuals participating. Uh, we have lawyers, accountants, uh, financial investors, and the like, uh, who have taken their time to look at this budget and and make some analysis to determine whether or not uh, it's a realistic budget, uh, which is what we understand the banking and investment community to be looking for for 2014. And I bring that point up early on in this presentation because, uh, as, as all of you know, the city of Scranton, when we start a fiscal year in January, one of the most important components of that is a TRAN, which is simply a tax and revenue anticipation note. I believe it was Mr. Schumacher who brought up the fact that there's a $16 million uh, TRAN in the budget with a $17 million on the expense side. We're assuming the expense side is higher for the interest portion of that TRAN. And, and, and I see your face, uh, which, which raises some eyebrows. And, and the reason an interest is going to be so high is because the cost of funds to the city of Scranton is so significant uh, because of our current status versus other municipalities who aren't facing that same dilemma. So Mayor Courtright asked us and really charged us with the task of going out looking at the budget from a general overview to line item by line item to determine whether or not there were any issues in the budget that we thought needed to be brought to the forefront. Uh, and I, I'm sorry to say that there are a lot of issues. Many people have raised the questions here tonight with regard to this budget. And I, I'm not going to use smoke and mirrors here. Nobody's going to hide the 800-pound gorilla in the budget. There's a huge tax increase and there's a huge revenue increase on the uh, refuse fee. Uh, unfortunately, we, we were warned about that maybe a year ago when Pell suggested you were, we were looking at a 117% tax increase rather than a 57%. Um, with that said, we've looked at many issues, and, and I mean numerous. We've met with Pell, we've met with DCED, we met with other communities who are either still struggling, similar to Scranton, or who have been through a process and actually come out of it and talk to those individuals who have been involved in that process. Uh, and one, one of the real things that we were concerned about and made aware of is realistic items in the budget is at the forefront of what we need to establish for the city of Scranton. That's expenditures and its revenues. And unfortunately, the city has for many years, and I know all of you are aware of this and everybody in the audience is aware of it, we, we've been deficit spending in this town, I don't know, somebody raised the issue of 40 years. I don't like to go back that far because there's a guy up here on the wall that was mayor back then, but it's been a long time. And, and there was a quote I saw, Ron Paul said, deficit spending is nothing more than tax increases. And all that means is sooner or later you have to come up with the money to make the payments. So when we looked at the budget, uh, we, we obviously we looked at the revenue side first because that seemed to be the spot where most people were concerned. Uh, somebody raised the issue this evening about the liquid fuels and the $2 million of state liquid fuels money. The city's not getting that money this year or in 2014. You have an immediate $2 million gap in your budget before he even got out of the gate to look at it, unfortunately. The governor signed the transportation bill, and he did not include the liquid fuels revenue in there for distressed cities. As a result, we already have a shortfall of $2 million uh, almost immediately after the mayor's budget was submitted to council. Uh, so far, there's been no suggestion of how to replace that revenue. So we have an issue there. Uh, Secondly, in the budget, there's a sale of city assets of $1.7 million. The budget, unfortunately, didn't identify what those assets are. We've been told it could be parking meters, it could be sewer authority. The unfortunate part from, a, from an investment banking standpoint and from a uh, lending standpoint is if we don't know what we're selling, we don't know what their value is, and we don't have signed contracts, it's not real revenue from their perspective. That gets us to $3.7 million, let alone the fact that we're going to be short next year 
1.7 from the sale and the revenues from the meters on top of that. And as Attorney Hughes knows, I think he's been involved in the parking authority issues. We got all kinds of problems on that end, which is going to involve the, the meter revenue. So we, we have those issues as well. The third dilemma in the budget on the revenue side is we have estimated an additional $1.6 million next year in earned income tax. The collector for the county, which I believe is Berkheimer, saw a spike in all municipalities this year of earned income tax revenues. Do you mind if I continue? Please, but then wrap I'll, I'll, up. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. He has told all the municipalities to use caution when putting that revenue item into the budget. And the reason for that is they believe it's a one-time spike as a result of the Act 32 being implemented and the new collector coming on board. You're up to $5.3 million short on the revenue side on three items. Unfortunately, the bad news doesn't stop there. If you look at delinquent real estate taxes, the local services tax, licenses and permits, fines, forfeits, violations, in lieu of taxes and departmental earnings, there is another $2.55 million short in those projections based upon simply historical data. When we looked at these revenue items in the budget, most of these items come in at 60% of funding at most. And as a result of that, you have this built in, what we would deem a structural deficit on the revenue side because the revenues aren't there. They're projected, but they're not collected. Uh, so when you add all that up, you come to a $7.85 million revenue shortfall without looking at the expense side of the budget. You know as well as I do, the expense side is pretty well set in screen. I think you guys have slashed everywhere possible uh, to cut <coughs> expenses. We're not sure where any more cuts are coming from. We have uh, organized labor contracts in effect until 2017. Roughly 80% of this budget is based upon fixed cost. We have extensive borrowing obligations on top of that. And as a result of that, somebody, you know, I have a friend that says it all the time, it was Mr. Barrera, kicked the can down the road. That's what we're doing. We're kicking it down the road. Um, what our concern is, is when we get to January, we don't have a tan. There's no train in place. There's no money to fund the city government for January, February, and March, uh, particularly in light of an extension on uh, the uh, discount period for real estate taxes. Those revenues are going to come in very slowly. The banks have told us, and, and we're going to be meeting with them again shortly, without a realistic budget, we may not get that funding. On top of which, you have a $28, $22 million arbitration award, a missed pension payment this year, potentially the whole thing, maybe some of it, depending on you know, whose cash flow analysis you're looking at, plus an interest penalty of up to $640,000 on top of that, starting off in January of 2014. So you, you are confronted as a body with some very significant issues. It's very difficult for the mayor's trans mayor elect's transition team to come in and analyze every department line item at a time to see where savings can be met because we're not in there. Mayor Courtright's not in office yet. He doesn't have his team in place, whoever he's going to appoint, uh, his department heads and whatnot. So they don't have the ability to go in there and do that. But as you know, just looking at the expense side, it's going to be very difficult to realize savings. There's some hope, all right? And the hope is that somehow we come up with a realistic 2014 general city operating budget and the lending institutions agree to loan us the TRAN and then we can somehow finance the, the arbitration award and at that juncture the, the city may be out of trouble. Well, thank you, Attorney Hickey. And I, I appreciate your time. And if I can just leave with a... Uh, a quote uh, from Martin Luther King. Uh, I think you guys have a very difficult task at hand. And, and he once said, the ultimate measure of a person 
is not where they stand in moments of conf conf comfort or convenience, but where they stand at times of challenge and controversy. And, and our hope and our wishes for, for council is that you can do what's necessary to assist the city moving forward in 2014. Thank you. Thank you. And I think Thank some you. of us have already done that. Pardon me? Mr. Some, I, some of us on council have already done that. Oh, I, I, Before, just so everyone knows, I think no, everyone in the transition team believes council has done an admirable job Thank of, you. of trying to move the city forward. Thank you. Mr. Be Spindler? Before we move forward, I just have one question. Sure. Um, you know, the, trans uh, the transition team obviously has looked at the budget, went over it, and noticed some deficiencies, particularly on the revenue side. What is the idea of Mayor Courtright or the transition team of how to make up for those deficiencies? Well, I can give you a couple of examples. Um, somebody raised the question of the uh, rental registration ordinance. I forget who said it. How many units are there in the city? And I think the budget is based upon $50 a unit, 100 and uh, 3,000 units for $150,000. You send out 20,000, 24, I believe, refuse fee bills. We, we don't understand where the discrepancy is. If you only have 3,000, even if you had three units per building at 3,000, you're still only at 9,000. We're missing 11,000 potentially units. The U.S. Census for 2010 indicated that there were over 14,000 multifamily dwellings in the city of Scranton. We're only collecting on 3,000. Uh, delinquent real estate taxes. We've had real estate tax sales in the city. I don't know. We had one this year. I think nine people showed up and maybe three properties were, were bid on. Lackawanna County sells delinquent real estate properties and gets them back on the tax rolls almost immediately. And if they're not sold at an upset sale, they're sold at a judicial sale. And even if you don't collect all the revenue from the sale, you're still getting the properties back on the tax rolls for purposes of future taxes. Uh, I mean, I, I can go on and on looking. There's, there's revenue items to look at. But when you're asking a new administration to come in, until they get in there and get their feet in the door and look at these issues, nobody in this in, in mayor like Corey's administration is going to be able to say, we're going to generate these revenues next year. The rental registration program, that could be a year-long process of going out to each neighborhood door to door, similar to, a, to the tax assessment, and determining how many units really are in the city. The information's just not there. So there's ways to enhance revenues. There's ways to go after delinquent taxpayers. There's ways to go after other revenues. The problem is we haven't done it. So when, we, when the banks are coming in, and this is what our concern is, when the banks come in and you don't have a commitment from a bank for a TRAN for 2014, they're going to wait until you pass a budget to make that determination. When they come in, if they say no, that's the concern we have. Because if they say this budget isn't real, we're not going to loan you the money. Remember, one bank. But you, you do recall that the mayor has the ability to open the budget. Well, the mayor can open the budget on certain items. On anything. But, but you're going you're gonna to issue a, 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 I'll give you an example of your, uh, your real estate tax. Whatever you do with it, whether it's current, at current rates or increased rates, we're not sending out extra real estate tax bills next year. They're going out in January or February. That's it. That revenue item's over. You don't get a second crack at the apple. Mm -hmm. So when you look at those revenue sources, it's one thing to open a budget and transfer expenditure and move it around to pay for other things. But to increase the revenues in the budget is impossible based upon think, those billings. I think you have to keep in mind that should this budget pass, you're going to see increased delinquencies because m there are many people in the city of Scranton who cannot afford this. I, I don't think there's any doubt. So I, I, I don't think you're going to, to realize uh, the amounts of money that are envisioned. On the, on the EIT and the real estate taxes, real estate taxes in the city are collected at approximately 88%. 
So there's a built-in 12% every year that, that remains unpaid. Mm -hmm. The EIT and is a little different increase. because it's collected at source. Mm -hmm. um, garbage fee is down around 78%. And, and I agree with you that the problem is if you're right, and, and you very well could be, that structural deficit that I'm referring to is bigger next year. Mm -hmm. The bank looks at it and says, hey, you're not going to get this money. We don't like the risk here. We're not going to give you a tran. So, so the dilemma that you're faced with is if the budget's not real and nobody comes to the table on the loan, that's where we see the problem coming up. And, and honestly, this issue could be way more impactful a year or two from now. If you have a million dollars in interest payment on a tran this year, you borrow 30 million for a judgment and a pension payment at four or five points above what everybody else is paying on. The interest costs to everybody here, including me and you, our, our grandkids are going to be paying that. that. That's just the simple fact. So we understand you guys got a horrible task ahead of you. We, we, we understand it. Uh, Mayor Lake Court Wright's coming into it. He's going to have to deal with it when he gets here. We, we just hope that by offering some comments, you, you can see some of the issues in the budget that we saw, and hopefully you know, we can assist each other and, and try to resolve them together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't they ever make it up? Good evening, Council. Good Les Miller, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. As I stated two weeks ago, I totally against this budget. 56% tax hike. Is, is, people just can't handle it. And the. Uh, the garbage fee hike is ridiculous. I don't know how people can do it. And uh, can I uh, ask Attorney Hughes a question, Mrs. Evans? Yes. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Our property taxes go towards our garbage being picked up. Am I correct? Pardon? What was our that? Our property taxes go towards our garbage being picked up. I have no idea. Oh, okay. I have no idea. From the budget, I have no idea. I'm I, under the understanding. I always thought that the garbage tax, I mean, that that was used to help defray that, and that if it wasn't sufficient, then there must be something in a line item in the budget to pay for the balance that's uh, due for public works to collect the garbage. Okay, I was always under the understanding that our property taxes are for our services, fire, police, and have our garbage picked up. And at the point I'm trying to make is I think that garbage fee is illegal. Because we're already paying to have our garbage picked up, but I don't think that fee is legal. You, do you have an opinion on that? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, as I stated, I don't think that garbage fee is even legal because that's why we pay our property taxes to have our garbage picked up. And uh, two weeks ago, right down the street here, there was a race through Scranton, in which Mayor Doherty was interviewed on Channel 16, and he was quoted as saying the city is thriving. If the city is thriving, why do we need a 56% tax hike? Why do we need a raise from $178 to $300 in a, ta in a garbage fee? It doesn't make any sense to me. I'd like to hear him explain that to somebody. Uh, moving on. Uh, Mayor doherty has been sticking it to the taxpayer for 12 years, and he's sticking it to the taxpayers to his final day. And uh, a couple examples are he's been firing city employees to give some of his friends jobs. And uh, one person was a police officer who was elderly. They let him go. He took it to arbitration. The arbitration didn't go on till, for 11 months. He won his arbitration, got his job back. And who do you think paid for it? The taxpayers paid for 11 months back pay. Now recently, another city employee who I know was fired, it's going to go to arbitration. This person's going to win, and as has happened as before, Mayor Doherty's never won an arbitration, and the taxpayers are going to get stuck with the bill again. So I guess he's sticking it to his right to the very end. It's, it's just unbelievable. Uh, a couple weeks ago, there was the, the caucus with the OECD, and it's the, the, it was mentioned that 28 loans are, are late. Why is it the city going after these loans? We're in such dire need of money, and there's 28 
whether they're businesses or whatever out there that, that, that are related with their loans and, and nothing's being done? I mean, this is an outrage. M well. Mr. Spindler, one of the first things I want to do when, when the new mayor takes office is to sit down with the mayor, um, the chair of economic and community development, and myself, and go over each one of these loans um, and look at the ones that are obviously some, such as the Molly Brannigan's loan, we're probably never going to see a dime out of. There are bad loans. They never should have been made. Yeah. Um, but many other loans that can be worked out to get bring revenue back into our revolving loan account, when we could do that, that will, will then have more money to loan out to other small business owners. So I think we need to review the entire loan portfolio um, with the, the chair and with the mayor, which is something I wish Mayor Doherty would have afforded the same opportunity to me over the last four years. Unfortunately, he hasn't. But that we need to be more proactive. Um, you know, we, the, the city can't just give a loan and then send a bill once a month, and if they don't send it back, forget about it. Um, Absolutely. And, and, and I think if, I think these people should be hit with severe penalties. I mean, if I don't pay my mortgage on time, I I have to pay a penalty, and like then everybody else does with any loan. I think these people and. And, it, and we should take them to court if they're not going to pay. And, and let them pay the court fees, because if somebody makes a loan, they have to pay it. And lastly, oh no, this is something else. Last week's paper, the mayor wants to cut the fire chief's salary. This is ridiculous. It's, it's not going to be Mayor Doherty's fire chief. That's why he wants to cut the salary. Last year, he wanted to give Chief Davis a $16,000 pay raise. Now, it's not going to be his chief, so now he wants to cut 26%. I think the fire chief's salary should stay the same. I'm totally against that. And as I said, it's not going to be his, his person, so now, now he wants to cut. Where, was, where were all these cuts when he was mayor? Maybe if he made, made more cuts when he was mayor, we wouldn't be in the problem, have the problems we're having now. So uh, I hope when you vote that the, the fire chief's salary is kept the same. And lastly, a previous speaker who was here saying about you better go after the department heads, blah, blah, blah. I can be a witness where you have sent letter after letter after letter to the department heads. And a lot of them were about my property, and they don't respond. If they don't respond, what are you going to do? I don't know what this person expects you to do. You can't go all after them or force them to come here and force them to respond to you. So. I I know you, your hands are tied. I know it's frustrating, but I know starting in January that will change. We'll get competent department heads, people to know what they're doing, and I'm sure they will respond when letters are sent. So we, we only have another month to go. We've been suffering for 12 years, and finally in another month, the suffering will be over. And I, I know we, we have a tough chore ahead of us. The new mayor has a tough chore, but the people have to be patient. It'll take time. It took 12 years to tear this city down because it was better under Mayor Connors. A lot of people don't believe that, but it was. It took 12 years for Chris Doherty to tear it down. It's going to take a long time to build it back up. And uh, I have faith in Bill Courtright, and I know he's going to try his best. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Joan Hodewanitz, and I'm a Scranton resident. I hadn't intended to speak tonight, but I just retired for the second time last month. And I used to work nights, couldn't come to, walk to uh, these meetings. And I dumped my cable TV as a waste of money, so I have to come now, or I won't know what's going on. And I came here to be educated about the budget, both what was proposed and the budget process. And I could tell you I was not a little offended with what appeared to me to be a little bit of a cavalier air uh, starting to meet the caucus part of the meeting late. You know, first of all, there wasn't enough publicity about this meeting. I read the Times, and I don't know, was it in the Times, or did I just miss it? Or did I get the brushing of edition? It was in? Well, I missed it, okay? But what really annoyed me was clicking on the council meeting's website every day and looking to see, because I know when there's a caucus, they, you know, 
show the caucus minutes and your, your, the agenda. And it'll tell you what time the caucuses can begin. And my goodness, I didn't see that until today. Is that when it was posted today? I don't know. That's done by the uh, IT department. Well, somebody ought to, you know, make sure the IT department gets it in there, especially when the notice says something about if you want to see such and such paperwork, you must notify the city clerk with 48 hours in advance. Well, that's kind of hard to do, okay, when you get that kind of late notice. Be that as it may, I want to compliment Ms. Shoemaker on her usual astute analysis of the budget, which she does every year, unfailingly. I don't know where she gets the time and the talent to do it, but you are an educational by yourself. Um, I have a question, however. Would it be possible to schedule another public caucus with Mayor-elect Court Wright's transition team to see what they have learned about the budget and their analysis? I think, I, certainly it's possible, but I think it should be Mayor-elect Courtright who's doing the speaking. And I do know that he was afforded the opportunity to work on this budget with the mayor before it was presented on November 15th, and he didn't take that opportunity. And you still might want to consider inviting him to the caucus with whatever representation you might want to bring. Because I think it's important for the citizens of Scranton to at least be informed uh, about the budget and what they're going to be paying next year and future years. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you, you know, I mean, we need to be informed participants in our government. Okay, which is one of the reasons why I was irritated by the late start. And your comment, Mr. Joyce, when you started, you know, well. You read the notice saying, you know, this meeting is, you know, conducted at 5.15. Oh, well, it's 5.30, you know. Somebody could have come out and said, we're running late. This is a courtesy to those of us who bothered to come. We're running late. We're going to probably start 15 or 20 minutes late. That shouldn't be starting. And we're sitting there watching, you know, all lollygag in. Okay. You should have all known what time the meeting started, shouldn't you? You should have all been on time, shouldn't you? Yes. Okay. I mean, just give us the, that courtesy. This is a painful enough process, but at least we came. And I uh, thank you. I know you're doing very, very hard work, and I appreciate it. But remember, we're the ones, ultimately, are going to be paying the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Creek? Uh, if you would send uh, a letter tomorrow to Mr. Courtright and uh, Mr. Hickey, who appears to be his spokesperson, um, asking if they would like to um, participate in a budgetary meeting where they can present to the public uh, their views on the budget. I don't know that it has to be um, before a city council meeting. They can very likely select any day or evening that is most convenient for them. And uh, arrangements can be made to have ECTV cover that meeting. Thank you. Andy Sprague, Citizens Grant and Fellows Grantonians. I listened to Attorney Hickey's comments on a budget. If you read between the lines, he's saying 56% ain't enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but I don't think people can afford it. I mean, times I sit here, I said the reason we took that wage tax at 2.4, and we took that burden on, was to keep our mothers and grandmothers in their homes. But you have taken that away. This budget will take all of that away, all the suffering we did for all them years paying that wage tax. You destroyed it in the last four years. And that's real. If you're a realist, this is what it is. 
You know, unfortunately, that we have a lot of retired people in the city that like to die in their home. And many times I came before you and said that too. I want to go out gracefully. But you're making it awful hard. You have to fight for everything in the city. I always said, your government is your enemy. Your vote is your weapon. And apparently we haven't used our weapon good enough. Or we wouldn't be in this condition we are now. I'm not saying he's wrong. Because anybody that can add one and one and get two realize that's probably pretty close to the ballpark. But I looked at your refuse field. Now when we started, that was a 10 feet. When that started, when we, get, when we did away with our refuse pile, we put that on as a 10 feet. Not as a way to generate money for the city. That was just the paper landfill. But unfortunately, we seem to be getting away from that. Another thing is, you know the university does not pay the refuse fee. And a lot of the other people that are commercial do not pay the refuse fee. But they can write it off, whatever it's they're paying the, land, the people who are hauling the, the refuse away. I don't know why that wasn't a tax instead of a fee, where we could have wrote it off. You can't write off a fee, but we can write off a tax. And there's too many things in the city that the poor common people have to pay, but businesses are able to write them off as a part of doing business. So when you're looking at that refuse fee, find out, obviously they don't get a notice from uh, whoever mailing out the refuse fees. So I don't know why some way that couldn't be incorporated into the tax. So that at least they can write it off their income tax and get something back from it. Other than that, we're just throwing it away. But this city is great for that. This is the most mismanaged city, I think, around. I'm not talking about the fight between you and the mayor or whatever. That's your job. Your job is there as that. You are a safety valve. And that's your job. Whether you agree with the mayor or not agree with the mayor, that's your prerogative. But we got department heads that should have been collecting them taxes that are delinquent. And we have to hire outside. Are we so incompetent that we can't even manage our own parking meters? Has it fallen that far? No, you know the papers that we may be selling them off. That's why they want to raise it up another quarter to give this guy more revenue to buy it or to put pressure on him to up our city action. That's not the way a city should run. A city should be able to do the things they should be able to do. And the city is not able to do them. That's why we're where we are now. People just couldn't do their job. They collected their salaries, smiled and did this and that, but they didn't do their job. We would never have had them parking garages all over the darn place. If they had the authority have done their job. But did you admonish them? Did you ask for their resignation? No, they're Democrats. The Democratic Party has ruled this city and has destroyed it. And there's no other way to look at it. This is where we are now because of contracts and patronage and not caring about the public. If people had cared about the public long ago, we would never be in the condition we are now.